We're joined right now on RealerCulture.com by Brian Peria from Canfax. Welcome today, Brian. Thanks, Sean. Pleasure to be here. Brian, today, uh, this afternoon, uh, USDA came out with their cattle on feed report. Uh, there were some expectations. Uh, what were some of the results? Um, it, uh, it's been a bit of a roller coaster the last couple months, I think, on uh, cattle on feed and reported numbers versus expectations. Uh, this month was kind of the opposite of last month. Uh, I guess most of the trade would, would consider this report fairly bullish uh, on the fact that USDA had placements down, uh, you know, steady to down about 1% versus guys in trade still uh, still expecting placements to be up as a result of the drought and, and dry conditions in the south. So they were expecting probably 7 or 8% higher placements, and uh, so that's and being 1% down will, will uh, certainly catch the attention of the trade. Yeah, w- w- with all the dry weather they've had down there, it really, to me, doesn't make much sense why placements would be down. Yeah, you know, like I said, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Last last month they caught uh, the trade a bit off guard with they had placements up 22%. You know, uh, they were expecting maybe 10 15%, so it's been extremely high. And all, all year long, uh, we've been pulling cattle forward, and, and the drought has, you know, put a probably in the last five months, I think it's around over 400,000 extra calves have been moving to the feed lots. So maybe some of them have already been moved in to the lots uh, ahead of time. And, um, you know, and there are some questions still uh, to be answered in terms of why the difference with the trade, as, as like I said, they were fairly confident numbers were going to be higher. So... Mm. So I guess so you mentioned this is this report is is you know quite bullish for the market. Uh, as an analyst, how how do you look at this and and what is what does this kind of tell us for the rest of the fall here? Well, you know, again, it's you know more than one one report is going to drive what's going to happen in the for the upcoming fall season and into really into next year. Um, just stepping back a bit, you know, we're. Cattle on feed numbers are 5% higher than a year ago. They were expecting them, again, probably about 7% higher than a year ago. Uh, marketings were a little higher than expectations, and the same for last month. So feedlots have been fairly aggressive marketing cattle, but, you know, this large placement is going to have the bigger impact. One of the things, you know, to break it down a little bit, to be looking at uh, the placements, like I said, they were down 1%, but... It's uh, the drought is pushing a lot of light calves into the feedlots. So all placement weights were down uh, this past month from five to fifteen percent for you know over eight hundred and versus six to sevens. But the under the little calves under six hundred pounds were up forty four percent this month. Uh, same thing last month. They were up over fifty percent. So it's really going to spread the cattle out quite a bit. Um, as you know, we've pulled more calves on the feed versus the yearlings, so it's going to spread cattle out, and we're going to have higher on feed or higher marketing numbers, you know, likely well into uh, 2012. Yeah, is, is there any other repercussions from how how we've pulled so many cattle ahead so early? Well, you know, I guess it's just setting setting the stage for uh, even further tighter feeder cattle. Like, cattle supplies, calf supplies going forward. Um, you know, even before all this drought started, we've got the smallest calf crop in 50 years, and the fact we've pulled, you know, half a million calves forward is is really setting a stage for, you know, uh, a fairly uh, just take a spark to, to really get things uh, to take off once these smaller volumes finally uh, show up in the feedlots or when feedlots go looking for calves and they're not there uh you know, moving forward. Yeah, obviously this drought is going to have a real impact on, or I guess a real negative impact on any opportunity for a uh, for a real retention program on ranches. Yeah, you know, it, it, this is pretty much, uh, you know, shifting cattle around a little bit, uh, you know, looking at, um, you know, there are going to be some cattle moving the north, maybe tiny hints of expansion in some areas, but given Texas and Oklahoma for example, you know, they have about 8 million beef cows, and that's almost twice as many beef cows as all of Canada. So from a Canadian perspective, I think that's positive when, you know, unfortunately for them, but, uh, you know, it gives us that much more of a competitive advantage in the longer run as, you know, we may start to turn that corner, and and they're definitely going to continue to be shrinking their herd, their breeding herd, and calf supplies are only going to tighten up going forward. 
Look, looking ahead to next month's report, is there what would you you know what's the early some of the early calls or predictions of what possibly could happen as we move into next month's report? Um, you know, we know basically at this point we know uh, you know cattle on feed continues to build during this time period. Uh, you know, as the rest of the other areas start to uh, increase, um, you know, their their fall weaning and, and placements on the feed lots. Uh, it's again that one's it's the placement number is such a roller coaster. Even analysts uh, week to week are, are are you know struggling with that one. Um, you know, again we we've pulled so many calves forward. It's it's a bit tough to to predict on that, but basically we know we know placements are going to still come in at a fairly high rate. Basically, they're probably not going to fall off anytime soon, uh, which again may not happen until real moisture hits Texas. Uh, whether it's calves coming off grass and they don't have wheat pastures to put a lot of these calves anywhere for grazing, so they've got to go into feedlots. So, fairly fairly high placement levels to continue. Okay, Brent. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks, Sean.